By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a game that I played with my mono red goblin build against Matthew from the UK. And he is playing with a combo control deck. And it is based on two main uh, key, or it's based on two key cards, I should say. And that is a mana vortex, that's a blue enchantment from the dark, which basically says that each player has to sacrifice one land during his or her upkeep. And the person that's casting the card has to sacrifice a land when it comes into play. And the Vortex is destroyed when all the lands are out of the game. And he plays this in combination with another card, Land Equilibrium. And that's a Legends enchantment as well. And it says, if your opponent controls at least as much land as you do, he or she must sacrifice a land for each land he or she puts into play. So in other words, if you're playing against him and he's playing the equilibrium and you have an equal amount of lands um, then you cannot play any new lands without sacrificing another so you cannot um, generate more mana I think the uh, the mana plan here with the land equilibrium and the mana vortex is not great for Matthew since I'm playing with a, a goblin deck not needing a lot of mana but Matthew was um, kindly uh, kindly enough to do uh, give it a, give it a go so let's see how this works out. I've played the Goblins of the Flark in turn one. I'm already attacking. He's down to 19. I'm putting a second Goblins of the Flark on the field. He's got a Chaos Orb. Wondering if he's going to use it. Looks like he's not. And he's playing a Mana Vortex. So we're starting to sacrifice our land. So he has to sack an island. And I have to sack a Mountain. I'm probably thinking now, do I want to activate it before my draw step? It looks like I do. And I'm playing a Lightning Bolt. So he's down to 16. He's down to 14. And the Goblin deck obviously doesn't need a lot of mana, but it does need some mana, and he's now taking away my last... Uh, oh, no, he's taking away Goblins of the Flark, of course, because I have to, to sec my last land with the Mana Vortex anyway. And he's keeping his Mana Vortex alive by playing another land now. I'm drawing two for turn because of the Howling Mine, hitting for one again. And I am not playing a land because I want to see the Mana Vortex go. And again, it's interesting that Matthew's playing a Howling Mine when you're playing against a Goblin deck. It can be tricky. Then again, you need to, to play according to the plan of your deck. And attacking again with the Flark. But not playing anything. So that's not great for me. Remember, my goblin uh, goblin deck, well, mine anyway, has quite a lot of uh, three drops. Hitting him there with a lightning bolt, attacking him again. So he's, he's slowly going down in life totals. So that's not too bad. Thinking if I want to play anything in my second main phase, having to discard a card. Discarding bolt lightning there. And Matthew needs to... Get into action because he's slowly dying, and especially when you're playing, ooh, he's getting a damage from the City of Brass. Especially when you're playing against a deck that's full of direct damage. Here you go, and I think he's on four now. There's another Lightning Bolt. I have to sack my Goblins of the Flark to the Abyss that he just played, but I'm refueling my hand. I haven't seen a Chain Lightning, for instance, and I have four of those in my deck. And okay, there's a Mons Goblin Raiders. Not sure why I'm playing that one out with the Abyss on the battlefield. I think I wasn't paying attention there. And there is an Icy Manipulator, which could be useful because he can tap down one of my lands. And of course also his own Howling Mind to deactivate it for me. And he chooses to Tap one of my lands. Playing a Chain Lightning, and that's the game, and that's what I was talking about. Um, I don't need a lot of mana. I think Matthew had control at a certain point, but this direct damage is just really difficult to play against. Let's see how that turns out in game number two. And on we go to game number two. So this is the game after sideboarding. So it's curious to see, especially... For me, what the uh, Vortex Land Equilibrium deck has done. And it's Matthew on the play. Very explosive start here 
with a time walk taking an extra turn. Let's see what he can do with it. <laughs> he's, he's playing another piece of blue power there. Um, wow. Okay, that's just uh, that's 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 crazy. Um, that's what you hope to hope to see when you're Matthew. That's what you hope not to see when you when you're me. Because playing a goblin deck is one of your advantages should be that you're faster than your opponent and you can put some pressure on. But I don't think that's really going to work this turn. A double vice. And it's like I'm playing against a different deck. All of a sudden, he only has two cards in hand. He's showing it there. So I have seven. Well, I had seven and I have seven new ones thanks to the time twister. Playing my goblins of the flark again. We saw a lot of that guy in the first game. And obviously I'm taking six damage from the vices and it's it's a nice combo denying your opponent his land and then killing him with the um, black vice howling mind uh, combo and let's see yeah I'm, I'm, I'm attacking what else can I do but I'm already on 10 life I mean I've lost half my life and this is turn number three is it well for Matthew it is but I only had two turns or I think I only had two turns and I'm down on 10 life. And there's a Chaos Orb. And I am sacking my last land, going down to six. And this is a problem. I need to play a land to play out a card. But if I do that, the Mana Vortex keeps working. But I have no choice, really. Uh, oh, the Mana Vortex is gone because there was a moment in the game when there were no lands and then... Or is it, oh, it's the fact that he cannot sacrifice a land in his turn and the Mana Vortex disappears. I mean, these cards are still a bit of a struggle. It's the second time I've played against such a deck. And I remember I kept playing, I kept asking Matthew, what does this do? What does this do? What's the difference again? And he was very patient with me, so thank you for that. And there he goes, what is he playing now? That's a Legends card. Um, I forgot what it does. I'm sure... The people watching know, and I'm actually playing an earthquake now for zero because I just want to get my empty my hand, and I have to I have to give the win here to Matthew. There was nothing I could do, and what a crazy game! This game took what two minutes, and I'm I'm dead. I'm over with. So it's one one now, and we're going to a third decisive game to see who wins this matchup. And for the people that might be interesting in that card that I could, that I didn't recognize straight away, that blue enchantment, it was in the Eye of Chaos. And what it does, it says all instants and interrupts are countered unless their caster pays an additional X. And in this case, it's a great uh, weapon against my uh, lightning bolts and chain lightning. So that was a great choice from Matthew to board that in from his sideboard. Now let's go on to game number three and see how this match ends up. The good news for me is that at least I'm on the play, so a crazy first turn um, at least is not gonna gonna happen. I, I at least have a chance to play something before Matthew can do that, uh, because that was just insane with the time walk and the and the time twister combination there. So I'm gonna draw. Oh, and it looks like I've taken a mulligan, which is not great when you're playing a Goblins deck. And I'm not playing anything on turn one. Oh, this is looking disastrous for me. Matthew there with the Mox, playing a Howling Mine, and that's helpful for me. That, that gets me back, but I know his intention with the Howling Mine. And as soon as he has his tricks and his enchantments going, um, it's going to be very difficult for me to win this match. And again, he's playing an Orp. I mean... How great is that when you play one Chaos Orb and you draw it every single game? I mean, that's one of the reasons why I decided to play Old School is just to flip that Orb. And now I'm playing another Mons Goblin Raiders. So I've got quite an army here. I'm attacking him. I'm refueling my hand with that Howling Mind that he has played. So, so far so good. And let's hope, showing my hand, I only got two cards left. Let's hope that he um, doesn't play one of his Mana Vortexes. Because that could get problematic very quickly for me. Um, he's tapping two lands. And interesting, he's playing a copy artifact. I wonder what he's copying. I think it's actually the stone and not the howling mind. Attacking him for three here. 
or, or of course the monks, but I don't think it's the howling mind. And Matthew has to do something, but it looks like he's not really drawing great here. Okay, this can this might help. This is the abyss, but again, it only takes one creature, and you know, I'm drawing into my direct damage, and I'm directing some damage here as well. Playing Wheel of Fortune, nice. Putting away two mountains. Oh, and look at that hand. Wow, that's brutal. He's losing his time twister there. And I think also a black vice. And playing another Mons Goblin Raiders. So with these cheap goblin creatures, I'll probably be able to play one creature every turn to feed to the abyss and keep damaging Matthew. So the effect of the abyss is not optimal uh, playing against um, the deck that I'm currently playing, the Goblin deck. Playing a Demonic Tutor. I wonder what he's going to look up. I have no idea, actually. I mean, usually when people play Demonic Tutor and play with blue, you say, okay, he's going to uh, look up a recall. Oh, this is interesting, a Tabernacle. Or Tabernacle, how do you pronounce that card? I have no idea, but it's it's great to play against this card. I don't play against this card often, and it means all my creatures now have an upkeep of one. And he's also tapping down his Howling Mine. Oh, this is problematic for me. So I'm, I think I'm asking now what I have to do first. So if I decide to sack one of my creatures, I don't have to pay for the Tabernacle. So I'm paying two for the upkeep cost. I still have two mana available, attacking for two. And Matthew's slowly dying, and I'm putting a Bloodlust on my Goblin Blue Brigade, and I'm playing a Chain Lightning, and that is the end of the game. So all of a sudden, I am dealing 7 extra damage with only uh, 2 mana available. So that's uh, only 3 mana available, I mean. So that's pretty, pretty explosive there. And I managed to win this game, and um, I mean, I'm taking the match here. So... Very lucky, because after that second game, I thought I would definitely be, be toast. Very impressive deck, uh, fun to play against. Thank you, Matthew, for the game. And thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. <laughs>